First, I'm calling for a constitutional amendment called No One Is Above the Law Amendment. It holds. And I mean this sincerely. It holds that there's no immunity for crimes former president committed while in office. I share our founders' belief that the president must answer to the law. And the president is accountable in the exercise of the great power of the presidency. We're a nation of laws, not kings and dictators. The decision can be boiled down to the title of one case, Trump versus the United States. The court asserted it was making a ruling for the ages. That isn't true. The court made a ruling for one, a former president. No other president in our history has asked for this kind of immunity for criminal actions. And no president, no former president, not me, not one, not one, has and should have been given, the, been given any exception to this with such immunity. The second thing I'm asking for, we've had term, lim term limits for presidents of the United States for nearly 75 years after the Truman administration. And I believe we should have term limits for Supreme Court justice of the United States as well. In fact, the United States is the only major constitutional democracy that gives lifetime seats in their high court. <clears throat> Term limits would help ensure that the court membership changes with some regularity. <clears throat> that would be make timing for the court's nomination more predictable and less arbitrary. Reduce the chance that any single presidency imposes undue influence in generations to come. The bipartisan commission I convened analyzed various term limit structures. Based on their report, I believe the best structure is the 18-year term limit. That would help ensure the country would not have what it has now, an extreme court that's the product of an attack on the confirmation process that's been weaponized by those seeking to carry out an extreme agenda for decades to come. By the way, these guys mean it. These guys mean it. Project 2025 is real. They mean it. Third, I'm calling for a binding code of conduct for the Supreme Court. <laughs> Supreme Court's current ethics code is weak and even more frightening, voluntary. Voluntary. Any code of Congress must be enforceable. Under the reform I propose, justice would be required to disclose gifts, refrain from public political activity, recuse themselves in cases in which they have, they or their spouses have a financial or other conflict of interest. Most people don't realize that Congress passed a law decades ago that says all federal judges, including Supreme Court justices, have to recuse themselves in such cases. But the current justices insist on enforcing that requirement themselves without any public oversight or compulsion. See, that's their decision. They don't have to tell us how they made it. That might work if the court was actually enforcing those requirements, but they are not. The court is not self-policing. The court is not dealing with the obvious conflicts of interest. We need a mandatory code of ethics for the Supreme Court, and we need it now.